morning guys and happy Monday <laughs> okay are you guys ready to sing hello ready hello cha 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 hello cha 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 hello and how are you cha 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 I'm fine cha 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 I'm fine cha 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 and I hope that you are too Cha cha cha. Okay, so let's grab our calendar. You get to where it was. Okay. Okay, who could tell me the name of our month? What month is it? Begins with a letter A. Good, it is April. Can we say April? Ready? April. Good. We're in the month of April, we're in the month of April, clap your hands, clap your hands, we're in the month of April, we're in the month of April, clap your hands, clap your hands. Good, let's count how many days we have so far in April already. We have one, two, three four, five, hmm, what number comes after five friends? Good, six, today is six. Can we say six, are you six? Today is April 6th. And what year is it again? Who could tell me the name of our year? What year is it? Good, it's 2020. Can we say that together? Ready? 2020. Very good. Okay, so I told you already, but let's see if you're paying attention what day of the week it is. So yesterday was Sunday. Yesterday was Sunday. Now let's figure out what today is. We have Sunday. What? What day comes after Sunday? Good, it's Monday. Could we say Monday? Ready? Monday. Good. Today is Monday. Now let's figure out what tomorrow will be. We have Sunday, Monday. What? What day comes after Monday? Good. It's Tuesday. Could we say Tuesday? Ready? Tuesday. Good. Today is Tuesday. I mean, tomorrow will be Tuesday. My bad. Sorry. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. Very good, guys. Okay, so we are not going to learn a new letter today, um, but let's go over the old letters we've been talking about. So, so far, since we've been home, we've learned two letters. Let's go over them and just make sure you remember them. Who remembers the name of this letter? Good, it's P. Can we say P? P. And what sound does the letter P make, guys? It says P, P. Can we say that together? Ready? Pa, pa. Good. And our other letter that we learned was this guy. What letter was this? Good. This was E. Can we say E? E. And what sound did E make? E says eh, eh. Right? Can we say that together? Ready? Eh, eh. Good. Awesome memory. So we're going to do a new sight word today. Our new sight word is going to be H-E-R-E. -E. Okay. Does anyone know this word by any chance? <laughs> this word is here. Can we say here? Ready? Here. Now this is not the here like we do with our ears. It's not hearing with our ears. It's here like a place, okay? Like we are here at circle time. I am here in my apartment, okay? Could we say here like a place, here? I We are here at circle together, like that. Could we say here, ready, here? Can you guys think of a sentence for here? Remember like here, the place. Good. <laughs> Could we say here? Ready? Here. Very good. 
Now we're going to go over our word family and I'm going to add another word to our word family. <clears throat> so right now we have the at or a t word family. This board is really wobbly. Still, can we say at? Ready? At. I think I have to sell top of blanket. I don't know. Sorry. Can we say at? So we are going to add letters and make new words. So I'm going to add a C in front of it. What sound does the letter C make? C says k k, right? K k. Now I'm going to add at to that. So I have k. At, k, at, k, at. What word do we hear? It's cat. Can we say cat? Cat. Now I'm going to add an H. What sound does the letter H make? H says h, h. Now I'm going to add at to that. So I have h, at, h, at, h, at. What word do we hear? It's hat, right? Can we say hat? A cat in the hat, which I'm actually going to send you guys a link to that book so you can read it this week to go with our act words. Good. Now I'm going to add a, another one. We did the letter M. What sound does M make? M says mmm, right? Now we're going to add, like, mmm, that's delicious. So we're going to add at to that. So we have m, at, m, at, m. At, m, at. What word is that? It's mat, right? Like a placemat or a doormat. Could we say mat, mat? And then our last one that we've learned already is the letter S. What sound does S make? S says like a snake, right? So we have s, at, s, at, s, at. This is the word what? Sat, like I sat down. Can we say sat? Ready? Sat. Now, we're going to learn two new ones today. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is the letter R. Okay. What sound does R make, guys? We should know this already, right? R says er. Can we say er? Er. Now I'm going to add at to it. So we have er. What word is that? It's rat, like a little animal, right? Like a little animal, rat. Can we say rat, rat, good. Okay, and we're gonna do one more today. I'm gonna add the letter B. Right, it's an, another animal. What sound does the letter B make? B says B, B. Can we say B, B? Now I'm going to add at to that. That's going to make another animal. So we have buh, at, buh, at, buh, at. What word do we hear? It's bat, right? Like a, an animal we see on Halloween. Also, it could be a baseball bat. It could be either one. Can we say bat? Right? So now you guys are going to repeat after me. At, at, cat, cat, hat. Matt, Matt, sat, sat, rat, rat, bat, bat. Very good, guys. Awesome job. So let's go over the numbers that we've been learning so far. So we're going to do all of our two-digit numbers or numbers that have two numbers in them that we've learned so far. So all the numbers, remember, we're learning start with the one. And I'm going to add another number after that to make it a new number. So what number is a 1 and a 1? What number is a 1 and a 1? Good. This is 11. Can we say 11? 11. Now if I change this to a 0, what number is a 1 and a 0? It's 10. Can we say 10? 10. Good. Now I'm going to change this to a... Three. What number is a one and a three? It's 13. Can we say 13? 13. Good. Now I'm going to change this to a two. 
So what number is a 1 and a 2? Good. It's 12. Can we say 12? 12. Good. Now I'm going to change this to a 4. So what number is a 1 and a 4? Good. It's 14. Can we say 14? 14. Very good, guys. So those are all the ones we've learned so far, and then we'll do our two numbers of the month, which are also beginning with a one. So our first one is a one and a five. What number is a one and a five, guys? Good, it's 15. Could we say 15, 15, good. And then we have a one and a six, which is what number? That's 16. Can we say 16, 16? So one more time. 15, 15, 16, 16. Good job, guys. Okay, awesome. So those are our numbers of the month. Now let's go over our color and shape of the month. What shape is this, guys? <laughs> Good, this is an oval. Can we say oval? Oval. Good. And what kind of sides does an oval have? Good. An oval has curved sides. Can we say curved sides? Good. Curved sides. So an oval has curved sides. Good. And then we also have our color of the month, which is this guy. What color is this? This is yellow. Can we say yellow? Yellow. Very good. Awesome. So, we are going to be talking about something totally brand new today. We are all done with our water unit. No more water unit. Instead, we're going to be talking all about plants. Okay, so we have to think, first of all, what is a plant? Well, one thing we do know sort of already, because we've talked about it during our light and water unit, is that plants are living beings, okay? They're alive like we are alive and animals are alive, okay? We know plants are alive because we know that they can grow, right? And they also make their own food, okay? Just like people and animals need to eat, and we also grow, so do plants, right? So you guys tell me something already. What are, what are the three things that we know that plants need to make their own food? What is the first thing they need? The second and the third. What is something they need? We know they need water, sun, and air, right? We talked about this already during our last two units. And plants use those to make their own food so they can grow, right? So you guys know a little bit about plants already just from our last two units. When we're talking about sun and our light unit and water in our water unit, right? We talked about how I constantly water our classroom plants, right? So that they can grow. So we actually noticed a little something about plants already. Now, one thing we didn't talk about is that plants can be totally different shapes and sizes. So just thinking about plants that we see every day outside, right? We see grass all the time outside, right? So we have grass, right? And we also have trees. Now, I'm sure you guys have noticed grass and trees are not the same size, right? Grass is smaller, okay? When we generally don't have just one blade of grass, we tend to have a lot of them, right? They're small, but there's lots of them. Our trees are a lot bigger, okay? But even though the trees are bigger and the grass is smaller, they're both plants, okay? So plants can come in all different shapes and sizes. So we know already that plants are living things. They need water, sun, and air, okay? And they can come in different shapes and sizes. So then these are things that we just know, okay, already, without even having started our plant unit. So you guys already know quite a bit about plants, but we're going to learn a little bit more. So one thing we're going to talk about today is the different parts of a plant. Again, we've talked about this a little bit when we talked about how plants drink water, but we're going to learn the different parts today. So I'm going to go quickly grab one of our classroom plants for an example. Okay, so I grabbed our class bamboo plant. What we're going to learn about today are the different parts of the plant. And we actually, again, know about some of this already because we've talked about it a little bit during our light and our water in it. So let's start with these. What are these, what's, what are these things called on the plant? 
You can see them pretty well in our bamboo plant. What do we call this part of the plant? These are our leaves, right? So these are our leaves. I'm gonna draw on the board the plant and we're gonna talk about the different parts. So the first part we have are the leaves, okay? These guys right here. So we have our leaves, right? We have leaves. Well, ooh, you cannot see that at all, can you? Hmm. I'm gonna have to make them a darker color, hold on. So we have leaves, right? So what exactly do our leaves do? We've talked about this already. If you guys remember, we said we put our plant in the window at school, right? I have it near the window in my in my apartment too, but we put the the leaves, and we put the whole plant in the window, but the, there's a reason for it specifically, right? The leaves, what do the leaves do, friends? We said, remember the light shines, we showed that the light shines through the leaf, right? And we need to keep our leaves in the light so it can collect sunlight, right? so the plant can make its own food. We also said that the leaves also, the air goes in through the leaves, right? Our carbon dioxide, so that way our plant can make its own food and it sends out oxygen for us to breathe, right? So the, our leaves help the plant to catch the sunlight, right? And it also allows the air the, the carbon dioxide to go into the plant and then come back out as oxygen, right? So that's one thing our leaf does. So can we say leaves, leaves, good. Now, another thing we have is our stem. Our stem, you can see pretty easily on a bamboo plant, is this long skinny part, okay? It's this long skinny part. The stem works sort of like the plant's body. One of the thing it one of the things it does is help keeps the plant upright, which means it helps it stand up straight. Okay, we see our bamboo has a lot, these long thin stems. Also, another thing the stem does is when the, the water actually travels up through the stems, okay, and goes throughout the plant. The stem kind of works like a giant straw, okay, in a way that the water travels up, 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 up the stem and goes throughout the plant. Okay. So this is our stem. Can we say stem? Stem. So our stem is this long skinny part of the plant here. Okay. Again, it's like the plant's body. It holds the stem. The stem helps the plant stay holds stand up straight. And it works like a giant straw and it sucks the water up throughout the plant. So can we say stem? Stem. So those are the ones that are easiest to see in our bamboo plant. We have the leaves and the stem. Now there's other parts of the plant too. There's a part we can't see. It's down here, okay? It's the bottom of the plant. This part of the plant works like the plant's feet. And again, we can't see it because that's the part that's down in the soil, okay? We have our soil here, right? And this is the part that's down in the bottom of our soil. So we can't see it, but we know it's there. It is called the root. Can we say root, root? So the root, again, is the part we can't see because it's down under the soil, okay? It works like the plant's feet. And it almost looks like a bunch of little stringy things. What these do is they suck water up, okay? They suck the water up that then travels up the stem. So the roots help to suck the water up out of the soil, right? Remember, because that's where the, these are, they're under the soil. Okay, it helps suck all the water up and bring it through up through the stem so it can travel throughout the plant. The other thing, like I said, is it's like the plant's feet. It helps hold the plant in place. Okay, say it was really, really windy, okay? I wouldn't want my plant to just blow away, right? Our roots help keep the plant in place, okay? The roots help keep the plant stuck down in the soil so even when it's windy, our plant doesn't blow away, okay? So there's two point purposes. They help hold the plant in place and it helps suck the water up, okay? So we have our roots down here. You just can't see them again because they're in the soil. There's one part of our plant that's missing. 
I got our other quest and play it to show you, okay? This one's huge. That's why I didn't pick an original one. I show you the leaves and stuff because it's hard to see on camera. But you can see it has a really, really big stem, right? This is the giant plant we have in the window at school. One thing our plants don't have are flowers, okay? These flowers are fake. Remember, we've, we've seen these before. These are fake, okay? But it's the only example I have right now of flowers. So a lot of plants have flowers. Ours happen to be fake, but a lot of real plants have flowers as well, okay? So here's my fake flower, okay? So I'll add that to our diagram, and then we'll talk about what a flower does. So our bamboo plants don't have these. Not every plant does, but we'll add it to our diagram. The flower is the part of the plant that holds all of the seeds, okay? So you can't see it on here, but we do have a flower, okay? And inside our flower are seeds. Well, what are seeds anyway, right? A seed is the thing we plant into the ground, right, to make new plants, okay? So this is how we'd grow new plants. So the flowers hold the seeds, okay, that would make new plants. Let me draw some seeds. Mm -hmm. So that is what the flower's job is, okay, is it's to hold the seeds to make our new flowers. So those are the different parts of a plant. So we have the flowers, the leaves, the stem, and the root. So that is what we're going to be talking about this week, or one of the things at least, are the different parts of a plant. So I have a song that we can use to remember the different parts of a plant. And it goes to the tune of head, shoulders, knees, and toes, which we know this part. But this time we're going to pretend to be plants. Okay, so I'm going to teach you the different parts. So we have leaves. Okay, can, so you guys can copy me already. Leaves, flower, stem. We're going to point to our body, right? Because we said the stem is like the plant's body. And then our roots, we're going to touch our feet. Because like we said, the roots are the plant's feet. Okay, so you guys can, cop, can sing along with me. Ready? We have leaves, flower, stem, and roots. Stem and roots, leaves, flower, stem and roots, stem and roots. <clears throat> Some plants even grow big fruits, leaves, flower, stem and roots, stem and roots. Good. Do you guys think we can go a little bit faster now? I do. Let's try that a little faster. Leaves, flower, stem and roots, stem and roots. Leaves, flowers, stem, and roots, stem, and roots. Some plants even grow big fruits. Leaves, flowers, well, I did that backwards. Leaves, flowers, stem, and roots, stem, and roots. Go, let's go a tiny bit faster. Leaves, flowers, stem, and roots, stem, and roots. Leaves, flowers, stem, and roots, stem, and roots. Some plants even grow big fruits. Leaves, flowers, stem, and roots, stem, and roots. Good job, guys. So those are the different parts of our plant. So we're going to read a little book now about plants. This book is called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. So we already know a fancier word than dirt, right? We could say soil. So we're going to read a book all about plants. And then tomorrow, I'm going to send you guys a video where we are actually going to plant our own little carrot garden, okay? I have a container that you guys probably have seen on top of the window, so you recognize it. Um, we're going to plant carrot seeds in it tomorrow. So let's find out about plants before we actually plant our first plant. It says, up in the garden, I stand and plan. My hand is full of seeds and my head is full of dreams. So right now, this doesn't look like a very good garden, right? So let's see what they can do to plant a new garden. The spring sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow. We're in spring now, right? Which is a great time to plant things, which why, which is why we happen to be learning about plants. 
The wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots. It's not quite time yet, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there, I ask? So we want to plant when it's warm outside. In the book, it's not quite warm enough yet. Here right now, I think it's pretty warm. So right now would be a good time to plant things. So let's find out what exactly is down in the dirt. Well, before we do that, I noticed something. I don't know if you guys can see, but down here in the soil, we have our roots. Okay, remember this is the part I couldn't show you on our bamboo plant. These are our roots. Okay, do you guys see them? So they look almost like long strings. So remember, our roots job is to suck the water up from the soil so it could go through the stem and go throughout the plant. Our roots also help hold the plant in place. So you can finally get a good picture of our roots. Also in our picture now we can see our stem, right? And then our leaves and our flower. So let's see what else is going on underneath the soil besides our roots. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects. They're digging and building and stirring up the soil. They're already working down in the dirt. So believe it or not, our insect friends and our worms, they actually help, okay? They turn the soil around, okay, which helps to the plants to grow, okay? So they're actually doing a pretty important job. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rustly animals, armfuls, wow, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. So what they're doing first is they're clearing out all the old plants, okay, so the new ones can grow. Down in the dirt, a pale bug, or I call them roly polies personally, <laughs> chews through last year's leaves. I give them a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plated suits of armor roly poly round. So the humans on top were clearing out all the old plants, right? So down underneath the dirt, what the roly polies are doing is they're chewing up all the old dead leaves so we can make room for new plants. So like we said, the bugs are actually helpful in getting our plants to grow. Not only do they turn the soil around, but they eat a lot of the old dead plants so that way new ones can grow, which is what our roly poly friends are doing. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. So this is what we're going to do tomorrow. I trail a furrow with my finger, which means she's drawing these lines here, right? You see? And sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the earth. So right first we have to dig our hole. We did this when we made our plant experiment. That got thrown in the garbage, right? We used our finger to make a hole, right? And then we stuck the seed in and then we covered it up with the soil. So that's what she's doing. And then just like we, she used, she's using her watering can. Remember we used our Cinderella watering can to water our plants? Down in the dirt, a tomato hornworm rests waiting for wings. And the, and the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. So here's a worm and she's ready to lay her eggs in the soil. So the soil also gives home to bugs and insects and worms, not just plants. So the soil is very helpful. Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout. Pea blossoms bloom. Wasps are on the prow. And honeybees visit, their legs loaded with pollen. So here, these bees are coming to visit the plants. Now, I don't know if you can see again, there's this really good picture about the parts of the plant. Okay, so down here in the soil, again, we have our little stringy roots, right here's our roots. Okay, and if you can see the carrot is down under the soil. The carrot is actually the root part of the plant. Isn't that cool? So carrots are actually roots. So when we eat a carrot, we're actually eating a root. Now, if you look up here, we have our stems, okay, our long skinny stems, and our leaves. So we can see the parts of the plant pretty well here. 
Then we have our earthworm friends down here digging in the soil. I weed and I wilt, and the sun's so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp, dark. So this girl's pulling weeds. So weeds are plants we don't want in the garden, okay? We need to pull out the plants we don't want. So that way it gives room for the plants we do want to grow. Because plants do need room to grow. So if there's weeds in the way they can't grow, so the girl is pulling out all the weeds so the plants can grow. Up in the garden, rain shower. Nana turns the hose on me. Eee! I scream and run away. <laughs> So now it's also watering the plants too, right? I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in the rain. <laughs> Down in the dirt, the water soaks deep. Roots drink it in. A long-legged spider still walks o o over the streams. So here's our spider friend, right? So our spider's drinking up the water too. But down in the soil, our thirsty roots are sucking up the water, right, to go into the plant, which will then travel up the stem through the plant. And you can see here we have some cucumber vines and the leaves. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs, <coughs> ladybugs feast on aphids. Aphids are these little bugs. What's really good here is that the ladybug is eating the aphids because we don't want aphids. They actually eat little holes in the leaves, okay? And we certainly don't want them to be eating our plants, right? Because we want to eat the tomatoes. So if the aphids eat it all first, it's not good. So ladybugs are really good for our garden because what they do is they eat all the aphids, okay? So then the aphids can't eat our plants. So it's really good to have the ladybugs around. Nana crunches some green beans. I bite a ripe, juicy tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. So here they picked the green beans and the tomatoes to eat. Down in the dirt, a ramen's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, and a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. So the bird is eating all of the insects here. Up in the garden, we pick cucumbers and zucchini, harvesting until the dark. Bats swoop in through the sunflowers. And I pick June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. Look, we have sunflowers, just like our friends next door. And this is the first time I've actually seen a flower in the book. I don't know if you can see what the little dots in the picture are our seeds. Remember, flowers hold our seeds. Down in the dirt, a skunk works the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. So skunks are eating up all the worms in the garden. Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Ooh, that's good, right? We don't want mosquitoes, right? So a praying mantis is another animal that can help us, okay? He's eating all the yucky mosquitoes. Good thing, right? Bats also that they showed in the last picture. Two pages here, whoops. Um, bats also eat mosquitoes. So it's good to have these animals around because they eat all the yucky mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids. And I'm after grasshoppers. I'm ready to swoosh and catch them. <laughs> but... <gasps> Snap. Someone else is faster. Uh-oh. <laughs> Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on its supper. Poor grasshopper. <laughs> Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange, and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for eating. So the sunflowers are taller than they are. Look, they grew so tall. She was able to build a house out of them. And now we can tell it's full because our pumpkins are starting to come in. Down in the dirt, an orb weaver spins her web, strand by silken strand. She'll munch on moths later tonight. So here we have our orb weaver spider, and it's building a sticky web to catch all the moths. 
And you can see here now our pumpkins are growing quite big. So here's the vine, which is the stem, and our leaves. Now the pumpkin itself, okay, is a fruit. And what is inside of fruits are seeds, okay? You guys remember all the way back to the fall when we cut our pumpkins open, they were full of seeds, right? Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines, and we know the cold is coming. We need to hurry and harvest. There's enough for the neighbors, too. So they want to harvest or take in all of the crops they've grown, which is their fruit and vegetables, before it gets too cold. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for colder days ahead. So the ants are gathering food for the winter, right? If you guys remember in the fall, we talked about how animals get ready for winter. So these ants are gathering food for the winter, just like the people are gathering the food in the fall for the winter for themselves. Up in the garden, Frost, ooh, we know what Frost is, right? <laughs> Lays lace on leftover leaves, where secret egg sacs hang, waiting for the warmth to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. So all the animals are starting to get ready for winter now. When Grandpa calls us in for soup in autumn, remember autumn's another word for fall, moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble, and the wind smells like winter. But the long red days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladies and bumblebees, earthworms and ants, are hunkering down, hiding, just waiting their time. They dream of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts until the bare arms of the trees and the blanketing snow. A whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. So they're all waiting for the warmth to come again of spring. The end. So these were some of the animals in the book. So well, that is an introduction to learning about plants. We're going to continue to learn about them for the next couple of weeks. And like I said, tomorrow we're actually going to plant or start our own garden, okay, that I'm going to take care of here until we go back to school. And then when we go back to school, you guys will help me take care of it. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow. Bye.